doesn't say it's on. Oh, here we go. Welcome to Social Media Meltdown. I'm Joe. And I'm Caitlin. Caitlin, this is a very important episode. Do you know where all your data is? I have no idea. Good, because we're going to talk about it this whole show. What do you mean by data, Joe? I mean by your online everything. Who owns your data online? Who knows? It depends no. on your post. So that's and kind of what we're going to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you want to chirp in on this conversation, you can tweet us on our Twitter names. Mine is at Speedia40 across the bottom of your screen there. And Caitlin? I'm uh, at Caitlin Shelby. Um, or if you're on our Facebook, if you want to go ahead and leave some messages on our page or whatever, any way you want to do it. So Twitter or Facebook, whichever one is your forte. Go oh, ahead. that's true. Our, our Facebook page is probably the best place for us because we're constantly monitoring that all through the week. And uh, we actually want to welcome all the new fans we've been getting through our Facebook, too. This has been uh, an unprecedented amount of attention we've gotten. I know. I mean, we, we, we really started from nothing, and, and we're just trying to, to get all these people and give them each individual attention. So I've been going out there and kind of giving shout-outs to people and, and seeing what interests them. Um, so I'm excited. We're getting Good. a lot of new traffic. So you guys that are all new listeners, you should stay tuned because right now we're actually conducting a study for uh, our paid um, sponsorship spots that you can do. Um, not paid for our show, but uh, as far as like getting social media traction. like Does it even make sense to spend your money on it? That's going to be kind of like a social media meltdown uh, special, if you will. Yes. So uh, we're actively researching that, but we're probably, I don't know, 20 days out of that because we want to make sure we at least have a good month of data so we're not spewing anything out of our mouth. But anyway, let's get back to the topic at hand. Your data on the Internet. <laughs> so, All right, so where, where do you want to start with this topic, Joe? Because I know this was one that you were really excited about. So, Well, I wanted to start in the beginning. Um, of time. You know, it, it, used to, it used to be... Uh, on the internet, you post something, and whatever you post is yours. And um, as far as terms and services, you know, when you hit uh, agree on all those different sites, uh, you're actually agreeing to different terms of services in your end user license agreement, otherwise called a EULA. Um, those are all abbreviations for that giant thing that you just scroll through when you're like, oh, I'm creating a new social media account. Blah, 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 blah. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Agree. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And nobody reads those terms and services, especially for like iTunes or just anything. So um, there can be a whole bunch of stuff on there that you might not necessarily like. Um, one of the things that people don't know about Facebook is that Facebook actually owns everything you're posting on it. As soon, and I don't want to just throw Facebook under the bus, but everybody uses Facebook, especially if you watch this show. I'd I mean, you're probably using Facebook. If you're posting a picture on Facebook, they have the, uh, they can use that in their own advertising. Uh, they can use that any way they want to make a profit, to promote. I mean, it just doesn't matter. It's your, it, it's their property that you've, it's your property that you've uploaded to them, and their terms of first service says they can use it how they please. Um, and that also, what was it? Was Instagram doing that too as well? Um, no, so I just looked up Instagram, and, and according to, to what I've been reading, so as long as nothing has changed, this article is about a couple months old, um, and so of course these terms and conditions change all the time, um, but from what I'm seeing here is that you actually own the rights to your Instagram uh, photos, and Instagram is allowed to use it, um, but they can't leave Instagram's network. Okay, so they only promote it on Instagram's network then? Yep. So there's a couple of different uh, ways to go about this. Uh, things that you're uploading to YouTube are primarily, like, I mean, you you got to go through these terms of services, and I'll list off some sites a little bit later that kind of help you decipher this stuff. But your, what we really want to push here is data is yours, and you're not going to get anything for free. The reason that Facebook is a free service is because <laughs> is because our data is being used to market towards us. Those awesome little ads that are in the corner of Facebook and are in your stream and Twitter, those promoted tweets, those are tailored to you um, because your data is being mined and 
your you're being advertised to as a uh, as a demographic really um so like somebody like me i they're going to be okay 18 to 25 year old male like video games cars computers um and you can see like on my side i don't know maybe i should do a screen share on my facebook but um on, on my on my the side of my sponsored bar here i have something for gamefly which is a game service I have something for Anchorman, which is something I liked a while back, and some car rental stuff. I mean, like these tar targeted ads are how Facebook make, uh, how Facebook and most sites make money. Uh, it's it's because of this data that they have, and um, so s there's kind of good sites and bad sites also. Um, it's really crazy because uh, since we've been getting so involved with these Facebook ads and doing a lot of this research, you can. S you can pick how you target your audience when you do these ads and the amount of things in detail you can drill down to get what your audience is is kind of crazy and that's how much data they're keeping on every single one of their people and how it, old are you where do you live um, do you own a business do you like dogs very oh. yeah you can go I mean you can go right down to specific cities and say mm -hmm. I want to target you know, I mean, not even like, you know, like Chicago or L.A. or something. You can go down to like um, Saskatoon, right? Like in Canada, is Saskatoon, business owners who are promoting, you know, Broadway. wheelchair repair or something. I mean, like it can get like that specific. And yeah. um, that, that data that happens is not just, I mean, you're, you're putting in all this time and energy in to upload videos and pictures and content, liking things. Liking things is a huge way of how, uh, how Facebook finds out things about you and knows how to market to you. But this, this, uh, this kind of giant ball of internet that is you is it's spread out. You can't. You can't. It's it's segmented out. Like in Google, um, all if you're signed into Google and all your searches are all your searches are saved. Uh, your search history is saved. How many searches you do a day is saved, and um, it's it, that data is technically your property. I mean, you're making it right. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it your property? Is that or is it you know like do do people just expect to know like oh, okay. I'm using a service. I mean, they can. I'm, I agreed to whatever terms. They can use my data. However, I. I for no, I think you're, you're making a good point. Is that I don't think people realize exactly what should belong to them and what they should have rights over. So yeah, your search history is an extremely valuable piece of data about yourself that you should technically own. Um, that you're basically giving away for for free. And marketers and. Um, people doing research and all stuff have access and they're paying for access to your data um, and, and you're not making you're not getting anything back from it um, unless you have the point of view like me whereas on Facebook I would rather see an ad that applies to me than something that doesn't um, so that's my benefit is I don't have to waste my time looking at ads that don't matter um, so if you see it that way um, well, and I think that's a valid way to see it too I mean these Targeted, I would much rather see an ad that's completely relevant towards me because they're using the data and what they know about me to personalize an ad. It's much more effective, too. So mm -hmm. I, I think that that kind of use of your online presence is, is perfectly fine. But the, the part that I don't like is when a site is going and uses content or makes it sound like your service is completely... You know, sign up is free, and you know we don't expect anything in return. We're just, you know, like it, it's kind of a raw deal because if you ask Facebook to take down a picture, they'll take down the picture, mm -hmm. um, especially if it's private. But if you have a, a current Facebook profile, it's fair game for them to use in their own marketing. And also, even with um, with Google and and a lot of the services like Picasa, uh, it's it's saved and it's on their server. But um, you got to be careful with these terms of service. Let me, I'm going to pull up and we'll, I'll link it. There is a site that actually interprets these terms of services and says, you own this, they own that. The name escapes me right now, but I will uh, link it in our show notes. And actually the best part, to, the best place to go for that would be 
our actual um, social media meltdown Facebook page. Um, we'll, well, that's where all of our show notes go. But one thing that is really concerning about this topic is that it's the, the, there's there's no general way just to say, hey, you know, like I understand this. There's no quick and easy way to decipher. Okay, you, you know, this is they're they're going to be able to use my pictures. They're going to be able to use my videos. But hey, I'm getting this awesome whiz bang thing that you know organizes all my cat pictures or you know whatever example it is. <laughs> I'm just like. And and that's something that Creative Commons is trying to correct. Um, Caitlin, are you familiar with the Creative Commons ways of doing things? Um, not really. I mean, I I see it come up in different things, and and so I'm familiar with it, but not exactly, you know, what what it's all about. So Creative Commons is kind of like a web standard of um of of sharing, and it helps people uh know you know what content is theirs and what content is not theirs and it's really for for people that are producing things on the internet probably people that are watching this show are people that are making content or making uh, photos or pictures or you know they they're producing things for people to use um, Creative Commons is a kind of a great way to protect your 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 content mm -hmm. and um, what this does is if you've ever been on a site and you see the little uh, CC in a circle logo um, you can actually uh, if you actually go to justcoolenough.com I know that we have a Creative Commons logo there and our logo says you know you can share it you can edit it any way you want you just can't make money off of it unless you tell us about it. <laughs> so, so like if you're sharing it and you're, you know, it's just for everybody to see and it's a funny remix, that's fine. But um, if you decide to start making a business off of something we're producing, you should tell us about it because we would like to get a cut of that. So, you know, like Creative Commons makes it really easy, um, and you can go to the CreativeCommons.org site, and this is a good way to protect content that you're making. The license is basically is a copyright tool for you, uh, for a producer, and um, you can these licenses they aren't all like that. You can just do uh, non-commercial license or this and that. It it actually makes it really simple. All you have to do is kind of put the logo there and agree to the terms, the terms that you're creating, mm -hmm. and they, you know, like I don't want anybody to use it for anything unless they contact me. And you could put that on your site, and it makes it kind of an easy to use uh, way to regulate what your your content is able to do on the internet, and actually give you some sort of uh, legal, you know, like a, a sense of I I I don't want to say because you know like in a in a in a court of law you know you can say well i'm using this creative commons license and this person made 4 billion dollars off of you know something that i did um i deserve a cut of that and if you didn't have that license somebody could just be like well there wasn't anything on your site that said you know you can't take it so exactly. this is kind of an important thing about owning your data and i would recommend anybody who's a content producer uh, go to the creative commons website and take a look at their different licenses licensees Licenses. And, licenses. And, uh, so I have a question. Easy. So, yes. um, how these work? Does it protect you from the network, or no? No, no, the, and that's that's kind of the other thing. It won't protect you from networks that don't that don't say otherwise. So, like uh, a network that wants to keep all your data, uh, any social network that you're uploading stuff to your stuff isn't going to be protected by Creative Commons, even if you do put a Creative Commons thing like in your logo, by mm -hmm. uploading it to their network, and oftentimes it says this in a lot of the terms and services, um, and I'm not singling out just Facebook, there's multiple networks that do this, when you upload it, that is like saying, I agree. You know, like you've already clicked I agree when you signed up, and it's your responsibility to read and know these terms of services, so when you're uploading something, you know, you're kind of, you've already agreed to the services. So, so where this is, is going to mostly come in hand is on your own websites and on your own blogs and places where you're publishing your own content. Exactly, yeah. Places that um, places that you're publishing your own content and I believe even on a, a I mean if you had a Tumblr page, Tumblr doesn't own your content but um, they can use it to promote their 
their own agenda, but they don't own your content. You can slap a Creative Commons logo on your Tumblr or Tumblog, uh, and it's theirs. Now, sites like Pinterest, I don't know what their terms of service is, so we should probably look at that. But, um, you know, like a, a lot of these sites, they kind of do a little bit of a bait and switch about it, and your content could be sacrificed. So that's mm -hmm. it. I mean, then this is solid, solid advice for anybody who. I mean, any social network you're signing up for, you might want to take a little bit of pause before you're uploading, like, oh, this is my favorite picture I ever took, and I'm a photographer, and, you know, I uploaded it here. Is it, I mean, did you just give away your, your content to their site? You know, it's something to think about. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a little bit of a rant on, on data security. Well, on, it's, on, it's, it's so, I mean... It's, you keep saying all this, and I keep reading more online, and it's really a sticky subject. And then there really is no clear, there's really no clear answer because. It, and it's and the reason there's not a clear answer is because terms of service are always changing, mm -hmm. and um, use cases are always changing too. You know, just because yeah, you know, I mean, you upload something to a form, and then the form starts making money, and then they use your picture. I mean, there's there's all kinds of uh, weird ways that. You know things can be taken advantage of. It just you got to kind of know your your digital rights. <laughs> it's yeah, it's crazy, and and um, that brings back a good point. We have we did a show on on digital rights, but it was um, more about you know what can they use of yours. So it was a little bit different than the show, and we we covered a lot on uh, passwords. Um, so if you haven't checked out that show, um, you can go back through our show archive and watch some of the old shows. Um, and then you can get a little bit a different side of, of this topic. Um, yeah, and in that show we actually talk. this little thing is just really confusing. And and it really if you're if you're really concerned about it and if you are making a lot of content, it's something that you're gonna have to do the research on. You're gonna have to sit down, you're gonna have to, to read through all these terms and ser terms and services and, and figure out um, what this means for you and what this means for the content that you're creating and putting out there for everyone. So it's a big job. It really is. And like I said, there's not. it's not like we can just go down through a list and be like, all right, Facebook's good, Twitter's bad, you know, Pinterest is bad, this is good. This is. We just can't do that because terms of services do change also. So, mm -hmm. I mean, to make... I feel, I feel bad out there for, like, the photographers and the graphic designers because everything is turning so visual right now. I mean, for over the last, you know, a couple of years, and visual is huge, and they're, everyone's stealing their stuff, <laughs> and you can just slap a giant watermark on it, um, but sometimes it's the only way. Um, one, one way, I mean, if you're a photographer specifically, there, it's actually a lot of good little sites. If if you take a lot of pictures, and this is kind of like a little fun. Maybe maybe we kind of moved just into our plug section just now. Um, if you are a content creator, even if you make videos, photography, um, sound effects, and music and 3D stuff, there's a really cool site that actually will pay you for some of your things. Um, and we're not sponsored by these guys or anything, but I know people have used it. It's actually called Pond5.com. P-O-N-D, the number five. Dot com and you can actually be a content creator on that site and people will buy your things and you can get royalties from it. It's kind of cool. Um, I mean, if somebody is going to steal your content because it's uploaded on Google uh, and somebody does a Google image search, you know, you might as well try to make some money off of it by going through a site like this. There's a lot of different sites like this, but Planet 5 was one that was kind of a low friction site for a lot of uh, vid visual, visual audio and uh, photo creators. Um, and this is kind of a good way like you own your content, you're leasing it out to them, and you get a cut of whatever anybody makes. So it's kind of a good way if you're a visual person or you're doing audio or music or any sort of actor effects or even 3D modeling and things like that. There's a lot of great wow. stuff on the site. Um, I've never awesome. heard of it. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, Pond5.com, pond um, and like I said... It's it could be a extra revenue source for you. You know, maybe if something gets really popular, you could pay for a pizza with it. You know, I mean, I I don't really know how much you're gonna get, but I know that it is a a little bit of extra money. And hey, if you're already producing the content, you might as well upload your stuff there, and it could make the cut. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that was a good plug for this week. Um, I'm trying. 
I didn't have anything. I always say I never have anything, and then I do. Um, I don't have anything until I just Googled some. Oh, yeah, I remembered I did this during the week, and it's just something awesome. It always, like, blows my plug out of the water. <laughs> because this this whole thing is, like, everyday practice for me, and so sometimes I'm just like, I don't know, so whatever. Um, but I've been sick for the last week or so, and I have hardly even been on the Internet, um, let alone you know, did anything. I can give an update. Um, last week I talked about going to Art Prize and how awesome their social integration is with that event. Um, Art Prize is the largest um, art competition in the world. Um, it takes place in Grand Rapids, Michigan over the course of a month. Um, so I was there last weekend um, and I, I um, wrote about this on my blog, but there was a whole exhibit of um, found objects that were um, encased in like a white linen so you could kind of tell what some of them were but some of them you couldn't some of them were really obvious like teddy bears and whatever um, but then they were all labeled with a QR code um, and you could scan this QR code and learn the whole history of the item so you know where this bear like if it was a teddy bear you know where this bear was found why it was discarded um, kind of the condition it was found in, if they could tell um, when it was created. and uh, So it was kind of cool. It brings this whole social and, and technology aspect to a more traditional art. And um, I just thought it was a really awesome exhibit. Um, I can't remember what it was called. It was called, let me look it up. <laughs> it was called Collective Cover. Um, so... I don't know. It's just different, and we're seeing this technology and this new media going into to mediums that we would have never really expected it to go into. Um, so, you know, we really didn't think we'd see the crossover of social media into TV a couple of years ago, and then we did, and now we're seeing it cross into traditional art. Um, so it really is, it's no longer, social media is no longer the future, it's, it's the present day now. <laughs> So I thought it was awesome. And then that site I was talking about, as far as the terms of service, uh, that actually kind of puts things out in a really nice perspective, is called Terms of Service Didn't Read. It's tos-dr.info. And what you can do for most of the big sites here, um, it's just right on their homepage. And um, you actually, I should really just screen share this thing. Um, <laughs> screen share. All right. Where am I? Right here. Okay, so this is Terms of Service Did Not Read, and basically you can just skim right through the top and it will show you right now, currently, how it is. Um, and here's Facebook. <laughs> doesn't have any class, Facebook. Um, very broad copyright license, so it's like they're very ambiguous on if they will or will not use your content. And then also things like, um, like Yahoo right here, Wikipedia doesn't allow cookies, but this is just kind of a quick way to sh see um, what uh, what sites are good and what sites are not so good. But here's one about Twitter. Twitter deletes your account after 30 days. It keeps your the rights and all your content. So all your tweets belong to Twitter. <laughs> so um, you know that's kind of something to know. Um, Skype right here. You cannot delete your account with Skype. These are the kind of no, you can't. I mean, and you've already agreed to that. I've agreed to that. You cannot delete your account. <laughs> it's very strange. I know. So you uh, until you start really looking at this stuff. Uh, oh, TwitPick right here is notorious. TwitPick takes credit for your content. Everything you've uploaded to TwitPick is owned by TwitPick. Mm -hmm. Everything. So these kind of things are. Uh, hey, when oh. you, and if you read the next um, X marks down, deleted images on TwitPick are not actually deleted. So although. You deleted it, maybe because you didn't want TwitPic to own it. Um, it still owns it because it doesn't actually delete the picture. <laughs> yeah, so you can. Am I still screen sharing here? All right, let me turn that off. <laughs> so you can um, you can see that like it's not all it's cracked up to be. You got to stay aware and um, really, you know, if, if you're making content you, and you're even updating content, it's a good idea to know where your data is going. Um, you know. There are uh, they're actually trying this site right here. Terms of service did not read or tos-dr.info. Um, they actually are trying to work on a class system so you can just know 
uh, once you go to the site, you can just see like how good are they or how bad they are. So you know they'll have an A rating or an E rating, class A for good, class E for bad, and you know you can just go right down the list and, and say, oh, they're great, or oh, maybe not so much. So yeah, that, that's re that's a really awesome research, and we'll definitely put all the links to you know Creative Commons and Terms of Service and everything um, in the show notes. Um, so if you're watching this live, if you wait a couple hours, we're gonna post the recorded video along with all the show notes. Um, and if you're watch already watching the recorded video, um, then you can either head to our Facebook to view the show notes. Um, there's also a link in the, the YouTube notes that will take you right there. So I'd say, we make it so easy for you. Yeah, exactly. Well, Caitlin makes it very easy. <laughs> I try. I really try. <laughs> I, I, I hope I hope we're actually able to help a couple people with this show. And uh, sorry, I've been so winded, <laughs> so so long winded with this episode. But and even though if, if in some parts we didn't actually come to a really good conclusion, if anything, we're able to um, let people aware that this is what's happening, and that you know if this is a concern to you, then you really need to start you know reading the terms of service or using this uh, website that does it for you. Um, because there's a lot of rights that come along with what what you produce. Exactly, exactly, and I, and then that's kind of what at least my objective was: just bring this to the forefront and let people know that hey, you know, not everything's as nice as it seems, and you're not getting everything for free. Sometimes you're actually giving content away, so be cautious. But you know, you still got to get out there. You got to get your name out there somehow, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, at some point, you just have to, you know, cut your losses and. If when you're a big star, then you can keep your own content. <laughs> Make your own terms of service. Anyway, thanks for watching the social media meltdown here. Um, I just wanted to say thank you, Caitlin, for completely redoing everything. We have our own Google Plus page. We have our own Facebook. We have our Twitter feeds, obviously, at Media 40 <laughs> And then at Caitlin Shelby. I'm trying to point over that way. And then we also have um, Social Media Meltdown has its own Twitter feed as well, which is Social Media Melt. Um, and once again, you can find all the information about us at facebook.com slash social media meltdown. Um, find all of our old shows, find the note notes from today. Uh, everything you could possibly want is on that page. So one stop shop. Exactly. Well, like I said before, thanks for listening. Goodbye. <laughs> And send your questions to social media melt at social media melt on Twitter. Yes. It's not a sandwich, it's like